Hello everyone, welcome back to Command Line Lessons on Code Academy. So in the last lesson we finished off with redirection and today we're going to be looking at something new and it's the lesson is called environment so we will see what it's all about. Also in the last lesson I said that we're more than 50% done, well actually we're 75% done. So that gives you an idea of how long it's going to take to finish this course so please do tell me what you would like to see after this course. So other than that let's actually get started straight away. Each time we launch the terminal application, it creates a new session. The session immediately loads settings and preferences that make up the command line environment. So we can configure the environment to support the commands and programs we create. This enables us to customize greetings and command aliases and create variables to share across commands and programs. You can reference the file system for this lesson here. If you wanted to, you could go to that site. I will put it down there. You can see it if you want to go there. So let's get started then. So this is, from what I see, just customization options to make your life easier. <laughs> uh, we'll begin by learning to use a simple command line text editor called nano. In the terminal, type nano hello.txt. Ooh, that looks fancy. GNU nano, okay. Uh, this will open the nano text editor, cool. In nano, at the top of the window, type hello I am nano. Oh, you can actually go through the text. That's fun. Um, sorry about that. Oop, there's a comma there. Let's watch out. And full stop. Uh, using the menu at the bottom of the terminal for reference, type Ctrl O, the letter not the number, okay. uh, to save the file. This is the letter O, not, yep. Press enter when prompted about the file name to write. File name to write, so I'm looking down here where my cursor is, or mouse actually, it's not really a cursor, it's a cursor when you're hovering over text. Um, so yeah, I want to save it as hello.txt. Then type Ctrl X to exit nano. Okay. Ctrl X. Finally type clear to clear the terminal window. The command prompt should now be at the top of the window. So the command prompt is here currently, but now we're going to clear everything that was above here. So let's see what happens. There we go. None of it is here anymore. So let's get an explanation of what just happened. Nice, you just edited a file in the nanotext editor. How does it work? So the first command we did was nano hello.txt. Nano is a command line text editor. It works just like a desktop, desktop text editor like text edit or notepad, except that it is acceptable from, accessible, sorry, from the command line and only accepts keyboard input. So no, no selecting things such as this. So that's the reason why I could go through text, whereas in command prompt, oh, this command prompt is made so that you can. I know that in some terminals, you can't actually go through text like this. You have to delete everything after that you've written so that you can actually go to the specific location. Um, so that opens the file, text file named hello.txt in the nano text editor. Hello, I am nano is a text string entered in nano through the cursor. So because we put the quotation marks there, it means that it's a string and not an integer or something. The menu of keyboard commands at the bottom of the window allows us to save changes to hello.exe and exit nano. So the that symbol, I don't know what it's called, stands for the control key. Uh, so let's actually do this again, nano hello.txt just to see what's going on. So that key there stand, uh, is on the top of the... Uh, sh if you do shift six, then you will see it come up. But even though you do, if you do shift and six, you won't actually do what you want to do. Uh, the, the symbol stands for control as it says here. So control plus O saves a file, which we can see here. Right, it's called writeout for some reason, okay. Control X, so let's find that it is here, exits, 
uh, Control G opens the help menu. So let's actually see what the help menu is. Okay. So if you wanted to know more, you can look at the help menu. And clear clears the terminal window, moving the command prompt to the top of the screen. So let's do Control X for exit. And again, Control X, and then let's do clear to clear the, com the window from the terminal, or I mean from the nano. Okay, so now that you're familiar with editing text in nano, let's create a file to store environment settings. In the terminal, type nano tilde. Oops, that's not a tilde. Is that a tilde? Um, that's supposed to be a tilde. Slash dot bash underscore profile. And I have a bad feeling. One second. So I managed to find my delta key. Everything's fine now. Um, so this opens up nano. If you are having problems typing tilde, then go there. I didn't have any problems. I found my tilde key. It's fine. Uh, so in in this file that we have just created, at the top of the file, type echo and welcome Jane Doe. Even though I want to be John Doe, but okay, if you say so. Um, also, if you get like a search box here, just do Control C. That just cancels it. I got that for some reason. I don't. I'm not too sure why. Um, you can use your name in place of Jane Jane Doe. Okay, I'm gonna put my channel name. There we go. Uh, type Control O to save the file. Okay. Press Enter to write the file name. I guess that's fine for it. Uh, type Ctrl plus X to exit. Well, it's not really typing, it's press. Finally, type clear to clear the terminal window. So now we can't see it, but it is actually there. I mean, it is where we wanted it to be. In the terminal, type source dot slash dot bash underscore profile. Uh, no such file or directory. Okay, let's make sure I am doing that correctly. Dot, dot, ba yep, I wasn't. I put batch instead of bash underscore profile. There we go. And I put welcome instead of welcome. Oh well, that doesn't matter. You should see the greeting you entered, and that is probably what I entered, so that's fine with me. Moving on. You created a file in nano called that and added a greeting. So how does this work? So bash profile is the name of file used to store environment settings. It is commonly called the bash profile. When a session starts, it will load the contents of the bash profile before executing commands. So if you wanted to have a user friendly command prompt, then just save a file uh, with this name and put a good greeting in it and every time you start command prompt you will see it show up which is quite interesting when this, yep okay so the tilde represents the user's home directory the full stop period uh, dot whatever you call it indicates a hidden file so you won't be able to actually see it uh, if you were going through folders and stuff and if you weren't looking at the hidden files with the command that we covered in one of the first few lessons of command line lessons. So this specific name is important since this is how the command line recognizes the bash profile, so the, the thing that you want to load every time you see it. The command nano bash, oh, uh, so that command opens up uh, the bash profile in nano. The text echo welcome Jane Doe creates a greeting in the bash profile which is saved. It tells the command line to echo the string welcome Jane Doe when a terminal session begins. You don't actually have to just make it echo, you can make it do other commands such as cd, so go to a change directory to a certain place. You can, I don't know, make it open up another file and things like that. You don't, you aren't limited to just making it echo things. The command source bash profile activates the changes in bash profile for the current session. Instead of closing the terminal and needing to start a new session, source makes the changes available right away in the session we are in. So that you don't have to reopen it. Just so that it's much easier to do things. So next task, 
Now that we know what bash profile is, let's continue configuring the environment by adding command aliases. So open bash profile in nano. Okay. Um, right. Nano tilde bash. Such a weird name. It's difficult to type it out. At dot underscore profile. Is that correct? Yep, that looks correct. Let's actually change this to welcome. Good. And how I'm going from back to front is using home and end. If you didn't know that, you can also use control arrows or no, was it alt? Nope, guess you can't, never mind. I was going to say you can use control arrows to skip through words, but you actually cannot do that. Now that we know what a bash, that's okay. In bash profile beneath the greeting you created, type alias pd equals so, okay, alias pd equals pwd. Save the file, control O, press enter to write file name, okay, exit nano, control X, clear the terminal window, clear. There we go. And that should have ticked off. That's weird, one second. The problem was that I had, instead of pd there, uh, so instead of pd here, I had pf. So if you do pd correctly and you save it and exit and do all of that, then you're going to be fine. And that's going to get ticked so you can move on to the next step. In the command line, use the source command to activate the changes uh, in the current session. So source and the file. There we go. Let's try out the alias type PD. Uh, you should see the same output as you would by typing the PW command, P PWD command. And that is what we do. So alias, I guess that's going to be explained when we go next. So what happens when you store this alias in bash profile? alias pd equals pwd. The alias command allows you to create keyboard shortcuts or aliases for commonly used commands. So this is the name that you want to give it and then this is the thing that it actually does. So you do the, the keyword is alias. So you use alias then the name that you want to give it equals in quotation marks whatever function you want it to do. Make sure here that you're not uh, using a function that already exists. So if you wanted to do, P if you wanted to call PWD with LI, you couldn't really do that because LI is sl something different, for example. So make sure not to do that or you're blocking one of your commands out. So the alias command, yep, okay. Here alias PD equals PWD creates the alias PD for the PWD command, which is then saved in the bash profile. Each time you enter PD, the output will be the same as PWD. So whenever you call PD, the output that command prompt is going to give you is whatever you gave it uh, assigned to PD, which in this case is PWD. Uh, each time we open up the terminal, we can use the PD alias. So let's practice aliases some more. Open, open the file, okay. I hate the name. There we go. In the bash profile beneath the previous alias, so after everything, add alias hy equals history. There we go. Save the file. Oops, do I have, yep, I do have quotation marks, just making sure. Control O, enter, Control X. There we go. And now we need to do clear. Oh no, never mind, we don't need to do clear. There we go. And another alias. Again, same thing. LL equals all of that minus LA. So you can also do modifiers here. 
you're not limited to just single things. You can even do echo something in here if you really wanted to. So yeah, I think that I am actually going to do uh, alias, uh, I don't know, my name equals echo and something like this. Although I don't think this is going to work, so I'm going to add these little slashes. Then Control O, Enter, Control X. Clear. Let's do source. Oops, source. And the file that we want. So this. There we go. Now if we do my name. As you can see, what gets printed out is my name. Uh, the little backward slashes I did were to protect the lines. You don't really need to know that because it's not in the lesson, but that is basically what they do. They just make make sure that they tell the program that that's not where the string ends, but it's the next one along. Just take it as that, don't worry too much. But when I do my name, as you can see, you can also print out things. And so let's actually test out the other thing. So let's do HY, the more important one. So let's try the alias in the command line, type HY. Now type LL, and that happens. So instead of having to type whatever it was, uh, instead of having to type five characters, you can only type two and still get the same result. If you were smart enough to do something like that and make yourself a shortcut. So let's move on to the last thing for today. What happens when you store the following aliases in bash profile? So alias uh, hy equals history. hy set is set as alias for the history command in the bash profile. The alias is then made available in the current session through source, which we did. By typing hy, the command line outputs a history of commands that we were that were entered in the current session. So that's basically similar to what we did previously. Uh, but history is a new command, which as you, you can see the explanation of there. Then when we did alias LL uh, equals all of this, LL is set as an alias for LS minus LA and made available in the current session through source. By typing LL, the command line now outputs all contents and directories in long format, including all hidden files as we have learned in the first few lessons. So that's all we have time for today, guys. If you have any questions, as I've said many times before, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions on which course you would like to see next, please post that down below because we are kind of almost finished with this, as you can see. So we have five to 11 to go and then we are finished with command line on Code Academy. If you enjoyed this video though, please give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, although thumbs up and like are the same thing, do both of them. Uh, if you disliked it, give it a dislike and tell me in the comments why you disliked it so that I can improve for next time and you, so that you do like it next time. But until that next time guys, thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.